first heard about uh, the use of high frets on the classical guitar from Yuri Steltins, a very good friend of mine and one of the most uh, knowledgeable classical guitar expert in the, in the world, in my opinion, and perhaps perhaps uh, the most prestigious restorer in the world today. Too. For decades, uh, Yuri has repaired from his workshop in San Diego in the United States many guitars, including the best in history, such as uh, Santos Hernandez, Torres, Hauser, Fleta, Arcangel Fernandez. I had the pleasure of meeting Yuri uh, for the first time in 1997 in San Diego in his workshop, and lately we have had more contact as he has come to live in Seville, in Spain, here in, in very close to Granada, and we have also both been part of the jury of the Granada International Guitar Making Competition. The thing is that he told me that uh, he began to have the idea of using these uh, high frets many years ago, seeing also that uh, these frets were used in the electric guitar or in the acoustic guitar or in both, uh, I don't remember exactly, and that he saw that it would also give uh, very good results on the classical guitar. The thing is that with the, with the high frets, and as we see later on in this video that the guitar maker Paolo Lazzarini will also explain to us, with these frets uh, you just have to make the effort to go down until the string touches the fret and that's it. With the normal or shorter frets you also touch the wood of the fretboard, but um, with this you don't, you don't have to do that. In fact, you can't do that. They are high and thick frets, so your fingertip doesn't touch the fingerboard. But something even more interesting to note, the space between frets where you can play the string, and when you play it sounds good, it's kind of get, it gets bigger. You know that the string has to be played a little bit close to the fret and in a specific place, if the fingertip goes a bit too, too high or too, it gets that dirty, distorted uh, sound of not making a, a clean sound. With these frets, the room where the string sounds good is bigger and therefore it gives, uh, uh, it gives you much more security, you play more relaxed, also without so much uh, mental pressure that you always have to play in that specific place so that the note sounds good. This is a, maybe a, a, we can think uh, as a, a bit revolutionary in my opinion because it really changes a lot to play with so much added security that the note will sound good. Coming back uh, to the Juris 13th uh, story, he saw these advantages and one day in San Diego, where uh, they both live, the guitarist Celedoni Romero came to him and wanted or needed to change the frets uh, on his Miguel Rodriguez, the famous uh, charge door that he used uh, in his concerts. And Yuris proposed him to use these uh, high frets. Okay, Celedonio said, okay, yes. And Yuris put them in and Celedonio was very happy. In the 90s, Celedonio died and his son Pepe Romero, in order to pay a kind of homage uh, to him, took his uh, father's guitar that year for his concerts around the world. Pepe was still not uh, used to using those high frets and even commented to Yuris that those frets gave him the impression that as you went down to the 13th, 14th, 15th fret, seeing them so, so high and especially so thick made, made it seem like he had less room to play. 
But Yuri's talking that no, that uh, in fact the, the space between threats was the same, that it was some kind of psychological thing of Pepe, that for him it seemed like he had less space. The fact is that he finally took the guitar with the same high threats and Pepe thought that at the end of the year and after the concert he would change them or something like that because he didn't like them so much. But after months of playing the guitar with the high frets on concerts, Pepe got used to these frets and came to Juris and said, Juris, this guitar is so, um, so comfortable and I want you to put these high frets on my entire guitar collection. No? Well, I, I don't know if he did it, but the fact is that now uh, Pepe Romero, he still uses these high frets on his guitars also the whole family and the high frets are always used on the guitar made by his son, the guitar maker uh, Pepe Romero Jr. and his grandson, also a guitar maker Bernardo Romero. And I have owned several of their guitars and indeed they always used these high frets and they were so, so comfortable. But need to say also that it's not all positive things with these frets. So, uh, in this regards, uh, we can talk about the glissandos. And they are not more complicated to play, but it's different, it's kind of different sensation because you are passing your fingertip over many high frets, very fast, and um, it perhaps a bit more, I wouldn't say complicated, but it's at least fluid sensation because maybe touching the, the wood gives you that fluid sensation. For this reason, these frets are never used in flamenco guitar because in this style of music, glissando and slurs um, and these techniques are used con constantly. But with classical, it's okay because I repeat, there is no problem to play it from time to time as classical repertoire you, you find. Um, my question is, why with so many advantages that these frets have, and especially with the main one being the playability, why aren't they used more? I would say that most guitar makers don't use them nowadays. Uh, it is because of lack of knowledge about them and their advantages, or because of fear that the guitar will be direct, rejected by the customer for not having the, the normal frets, the usual frets, or that it takes a bit of practice to get used to these frets. Although, I'm, in my experience, it takes practically, practically no time at all to get used to them. But uh, the advantage of having more space to put your fingertips to make the notes sound good is a very, very good reason to use them. Uh, talking with Paula about it, she told me that at first people are a bit afraid, but once they use them and they play with them, they cannot go back to the to the normal frets, to the shorter frets. I don't know. Uh, if you are a guitar maker and you have used them, it would be very interesting if you could give me your opinion about them uh, below. Or if you are a guitarist and you have used them or don't want to use them for some reason, tell me, tell me why, because it's really interesting to see. Um, Let's see now what Paula Lazzarini has to say about these uh, frets that she has used um, in the last guitar she has made, uh, especially for us, for Madera. Ahora, ¿cómo se suena traste alto? Ok. A ver. Prácticamente, no sé si se ve un poquito ahí. Sí. Ese, ella es el ángulo. No hace falta pisar fuerte de que tenga que tocar la madera, ¿sí? Porque con apenas ese apoyo que estoy haciendo es suficiente para... Estoy, no puedo, las dos cosas, ahí está. ¿Sí? Yo no hago más que eso. Y estoy tocando la sexta, ¿sí? Si voy a tocar la quinta, a ver si puedo. Es el mismo... No sé si se ve, ahí se ve, tac. Yo no hago esto, no piso fuerte porque cambio la entonación. Estos mangos Millennium van siempre con esta facilidad del traste alto porque le queda bien, además, y facilita a que es 
lleva tiempo habituarse a a no, a no hacer fuerza ¿sí? por ejemplo aquí y, y lo mismo con no sé si puedo hacer foco en uno bajito ahí por ejemplo si quiero hacer foco ahí donde estoy, ahí ¿Eh? ya ese y fíjate que hay luz todavía entre mi, la yema de mi dedo y la madera no hace falta que yo haga esto ¿sí? porque voy a, a desentonar además la cuerda un traste alto con ese pico, esa pequeña fuerza es todo lo que necesita son unas cuatro décimas el más de un traste normal que ayuda a a no tener que eh, apretar fuerte sí. lleva tiempo sí si no una persona que tal vez no conoce mucho el traste alto puede ser que le lleve algún tiempo tener que habituarse eso es es muy normal y lo hablé con mucha gente que guitarrista esta cuestión del traste alto ahí está mira Ta, y no toco no toco la madera 